for this video, we're going to solve the following equations. And when we get to our solutions, what this question wants us to do is it wants us to add our solutions together to get a final solution. So we should be getting two answers for each problem. And when we get our two answers, we're going to just add those two together to get a total answer there at the end. So here, for example, 8, we're taking a look at the square root of 6x plus 7 minus 2x is equal to 3. So we're solving radical equations. When it comes to solving radical equations, one of the main things that you want to focus on in the beginning is you want to isolate your radical on one side of the equation. So if you have one radical in your equation, you want the radical to be by itself on one side, everything else on the other side. Or if you have two radicals in your equation, you want one on either side. So you want to try and get the radical by itself as much as possible. So if I'm starting with example A here, so the square root of 6x plus 7, then minus 2x is equal to 3. The first thing I'm going to do is move the 2x over to the other side so that my square root is completely by itself. So I'm going to add 2x to each side. That's going to cancel on the left-hand side, leaving me with the square root of 6x plus 7. And then that's going to equal to 2x plus 3. Now that I have the radical completely by itself on one side, so in order to solve radical equations or in order to get rid of the radical, what you want to do is you want to square that term. A radical and a square are opposites of each other. But remember that what you do to one side, you must do to the other side, so we have to square both sides. On the left-hand side, the radical and the square cancel, leaving us with 6x plus 7. On the right-hand side, we have 2x plus 3 squared, which is the same thing as 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. You can write out the multiplication like that if you want to, so that you can then distribute or FOIL, uh, whichever your preferred method, in order to multiply. Uh, I'm going to use FOIL, so first times first, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Outside gives us 3 times 2x, which is 6x. Inside gives us another 6x. And last times last, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Doing some cleanup here. So let's see, 4x squared, we're going to drop that down. We have our two middle terms here that are going to combine. 6x plus 6x gives us 12x, and then drop down that 9. Um, which means our next step here, noticing that we're left with a quadratic equation here. Typically, as soon as you notice that you have a quadratic equation left in your problem after this step here, when dealing with quadratic equations, you want to get everything moved over to one side of the equation to where it's set equal to zero. So the next thing I'm going to do is subtract this 6x to either side and also subtract the 7 so that this is set equal to zero. So dropping down the 4x squared, 12x minus 6x gives us 6x, and 9 minus 7 is 2. So that we're left with this quadratic equation that we need to solve. The first process in trying to solve a quadratic equation, I would recommend trying to factor it before doing anything else. Um, so let's see if this thing factors. I am going to factor this using no fuss factoring. No fuss factoring tells us to take the first term and repeat it twice. 4x and 4x. Second step in O's plus factoring tells us to take our first number times our last. That is 4 times 2 is equal to 8. And we're looking for what multiplies to get 8, but adds or subtracts to get our middle term, which is a 6. The only way to get 8 is 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. Since 2 plus 4 give us a 6, we're going to use the 2 and the 4. Everything is positive in our polynomial there, so everything is going to be positive in our factors. The last step for no plus factoring tells us to reduce our factors. So taking a look at 4x and 2, they have a 2 in common, right? I can divide a 2 out of 4, I can divide a 2 out of 2. Looking at 4x and 4, they both have a 4 in common that I can divide out. So kind of think about reducing fractions here. Whenever we do this simplification, 4 divided by 2 is 2x, plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 4 gives me 1x plus 4 over 4 is 1. This is what um, our factored problem looks like. After this step here, our problem is factored. Now we can use our zero factor property, which tells us that we can take each one of our factors. We can take 2x plus 1, set it equal to 0. 
take x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and we want to solve both of these equations. Solving the first equation, subtract that 1 on both sides, giving us 2x is equal to negative 1, and dividing out the coefficient gives us x is equal to a negative 1 half. Solving our other equation, all we have to do is subtract 1 on both sides to get x is equal to a negative 1. So our two solutions are a negative 1 half and a negative 1. Do remember though with this problem they want us to add our solutions together. So they want us to do a negative 1 half and add that to the negative 1. When we add this together do make sure that you do have to get common denominators. Common denominators would be a 2 making this be a negative 1 half plus a negative 2 over 2 that when we add these together we get a grand total of negative 3 halves when we add our two solutions together. Let's take a look at our next problem. For our next example, we have the square root of 2x plus 3 minus the square root of x minus 2 is equal to 2. Now remember, when it comes to radicals, you want to do your best to isolate the radical on either side of the equation as much as possible. Since I have two radicals here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one radical over to the other side. So I'm actually going to add the square root of x minus 2 over to the right hand side. To where when I do that, I'm going to be left with, let's see, the square root of 2x plus 3 is equal to the square root of x minus 2 plus 2. Now that I have a radical on either side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. All right, remember that a radical and a square are opposites of each other, so it's going to help us cancel some things out here. On the left-hand side, the radical and the square cancel out, leaving us with 2x plus 3. On the right-hand side, we actually need to square this entire thing out here. So we need to do the square root of x minus 2 plus 2 times the square root of x minus 2 plus 2. So I'm going to use the FOIL method in order to multiply all of this together. F stands for first, so that's the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x minus 2, which is just x minus 2. Outside gives me 2 times the square root of x minus 2. Inside is another 2 times the square root of x minus 2. So I'm actually going to combine those together. 2 square roots of 2 plus 2 square roots of 2 is 4 square roots of 2. So, I mean, is 4 square roots of x minus 2. And then last times last, 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Doing a little bit of cleanup here, let's see. Um, I have a few things that I can do here. Um, I have some like terms on the right hand side. Um, but what I also see is that I'm left with this radical over here, which means I still have some cleanup that I'm going to have to do. <coughs> which means what I'm going to do next is everything that's not a radical, I'm going to move it over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract this x on both sides. It'll cancel from the right. 2x minus x is an x on the left-hand side. If I've combined these two terms here, negative 2 plus 4 is actually a 2. I'm going to subtract that 2 to the other side. And when I do that, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. So on the left-hand side, I have x plus 1. On the right-hand side, I have my radical left there. Okay. So because I'm still left with a radical, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to uh, square either side of the equation again. All right. So square the left side, square the right side. When I square the left side, that's x plus 1 squared. Remember, that's x plus 1 times x plus 1. And when we multiply that out, we get x squared plus 2x plus 1. On the right-hand side, we have 4 times the square root of x minus 2, which is 4 times the square root of x minus 2 times 4 times the square root of x minus 2. And when we do that multiplication together, 4 times 4 gives us 16. Square root of x minus 2 times the square root of x minus 2 leaves us with x minus 2 when we do that multiplication. So let's do some cleanup here. On the right-hand side, we need to distribute that 16. 16 times x is 16x minus 16 times 2 is 32. And let's drop down the left-hand side of our equation. 
Because I see that I have this x squared term right over here, that tells me that this is a quadratic equation, which means I'm probably going to have to factor, uh, do some additional steps here in order to solve. So because I'm dealing with a quadratic equation, I want to move everything over to one side of the equation to where it's set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract this 16x on both sides, and I'm going to add the 32 on both sides to get everything moved over to one side of the equation. So that's going to look like x squared minus 14x plus 33. And I'm actually going to move this equation right over here to wrap it up. So we had x squared minus 14x plus 33 is equal to zero. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and factor this thing, and let's hope that it factors so that we can wrap this problem up and solve it. x squared factors to x times x. 33, factors of 33 that add or subtract to get 14, well one of the only ways to get 33 there is 3 times 11. 3 times 11 is 33, 3 plus 11 is 14, so that works out great. Our sign should be a minus minus here, since negative times negative is positive, negative plus negative is negative. So now that we have it factored, we can use our zero factor property that says that we can split each one of these factors up, set them each equal to zero, and solve. So it's a matter of adding three to both sides, or adding 11 to both sides. So that means that x is equal to three, or x is equal to 11, which would be our two answers for this problem here. Do keep in mind, again, for this particular problem, they do want us to add our two solutions up to get a final solution. So 3 plus 11 gives me a 14 there as our final answer. Otherwise, that's it for this video.